Hello everybody, here is Mr. C and this is their welcome recording for Earth Science 112. Our goal for today's video is to understand the course, more about it, know and know what to do next and look at that picture here. Here's our Earth and we're going to study all four uh, major elements uh, that make us um, aware of Earth, that is space out there, right? The blue is the water and the land masses including glaciers is number three and this thin blue layer out here that's our air that we breathe. Let's go to the next slide. Oh, here it is. A um, little bit more about myself. I was born in Innsbruck, Austria. I have a little accent, of course. You can detect that. Uh, if I mispronounce something, please let me know. I'm still learning. I started out my career in chemistry, uh, went to work, then got my high school diploma in electronics, studied physics, came to the US in 94, studied materials engineering at MIT in the East Coast, worked at Intel for 10 years. Now I have two daughters, 12 and 14, and I'm credentialed in all areas of science, earth, bio, physics, chemistry, and math. Uh, two years of brick and mortar, fourth year at Cava. I like outdoors, but um, I'm currently a little bit out of commission. I have my hand um, in not a good shape, but that's all right. Uh, the course exploration is the first assignment for this course. Uh, it's worth 10 points here. Um, and it's a Google Doc, so um, you you click on it. It was handed out to you during your first live session, but you can also get through it over course materials. And there's your start date uh, when this assignment became available, August 30. It's due September 1st for the first cohort. Uh, we have other students starting in two-week intervals, so then this uh, timeline will be pushed out. But if you don't turn it in by uh, September 1st, you are part of the first cohort, so it will be zeroed out. It looks like a good old Google Doc. Put in your email address, your kaliva.org. It's good practice to learn your email address, uh, and then your last name, first initial, your last name, and first initial, and then you answer about 10 questions about the course, and you get your 10 points, and that's all I want to say about that. I will go fairly quickly through some of this material, knowing that you can pause and digest it a little slower if you want to look at more things. Uh, <clears throat> so what are we learning about this semester? Everything for you is laid out here. Uh, if you go to content first, content, and I mentioned already course materials, all good stuff here, including a list of recordings, the class connect schedule, syllabus, whatnot. Down here are the major parts, right? The major um, units of the course. And I've copied them one more time here in bigger view. And I mapped them here to our reference guide, the Earth Science Reference Guide that's down here is our online textbook, which is very, very good. It's not your standard boring overloaded textbook. It's really good. Uh, the only downside is the uh, units in the course uh, don't map one to one to the units in the reference guide. I showed you which ones belong to which unit, and I think you can figure out the rest there uh, fairly quick. Uh, unit 1 talks about earth science and systems. We we'll learn about topographic maps. We're going to have a lab on that one. Um, longitude, land, uh, latitude, um, the various spheres of the earth and whatnot. So uh, good introduction, fairly high level. Units 2, 3, and 4 are this geology unit, the really core. And it's going to be a long unit. We have a mid-unit test. Um, we start out with uh, working up to the rock cycle and then through uh, earthquakes into plate tectonics and a little bit the history of the Earth. Um, so it's a fairly good uh, overview of, of the key elements of the Earth. Unit 5, um, I should put the laser point up here, right? <laughs> a little bit of history about the atmosphere. Um, that's the little thin layer we all depend so much. Air pollution all the way down to wind patterns and atmospheric circulation. I'm sure you have heard about this thing called the jet stream. What the heck is that? We're going to find out about that. And Unit 6, more about this uh, layer of air, uh, bringing it together, bringing us this water, right? And we call this weather. Um, so we're going to learn about the various weather, the air masses, and um, the powerful forces like the hurricanes we experienced, for example, currently in Texas, OK? Uh, course assessments. Everybody wants to know, how do I pass that course? <coughs> There are four elements to the assessments that give you points. One is quizzes, the second one is unit tests, then the final, and of course the labs. I should have put the labs probably before. What I will not do is I don't do any discussions, so you're free to do that in English and other assignments. And I will not do phrase that paces. 
Uh, if you don't know what it is, don't need to worry. If you know it, what it is from the past, I will not do them. It tends to confuse some students. So um, the assignments become available on a specific day. I'll do on that day. We'll get zeroed out at least once a week. Usually, if I have time the next day, but at least once a week. And uh, you can submit for full credit, even if it's late. But you need to hit the quota close date, 10.30, and then uh, for these two units. So these two units will close at October 30. I will give you plenty of warnings on that one. So a little bit more details. I don't go into everything. The most important thing about quizzes is you have unlimited. There's no limit. You can do 10 retakes, 20, 100. <laughs> you won't have time for that. But they're unlimited. I show you the questions that you answered wrongly, not with the answer, so you can retake it. The highest score stays on the, on the grade book. Um, it's untimed. Um, and um, I strongly advise you use quizzes to check your learning. If you did the lesson or um, listen to me, uh, the final thing check is, you know, do you get the quiz? And if not, you can take it again. It's also very useful to, be, uh, to use this for review before unit test. Unit test or test time. You have two attempts for the first time ever at Kaaba. I try out two attempts. Um, some students struggle with the first time, so you have another attempt. I will show you the wrongly answered questions without the answers, so you got to figure those out. The highest score remains on the gradebook. Here's the thing to remember. There's a random order to it, so it's no point in memorizing question one was the correct answer A, question two B, they will change, right? You will only see one question at a time. In general, I'll only show you one question at a time. You can navigate through it though, but it takes time. And the time I extend from one hour to three hours, but another 30 minutes grace period. So many, many um, uh, enough time, I think so. The file is only one attempt though. By that time, so you used to two attempts. I need to tell you that this time, the only answer questions are not shown. It's only one attempt. I need to keep those answers tight. I give you an extra hour there. And uh, that's about it. Labs. And I don't meet the cute laborator up there <laughs> to talk. You have two submissions. Um, I'll give you the comments and the point breakdown in the comments box. I'll show you on the next slide where that is. I don't write into the labs. That way I can allow you to submit PDF files. Okay, some of you want to have a PDF file rather than a doc or docx file. Uh, all labs are modified. That means whenever you see a lesson in the course that uh, says download this material and this material doesn't have the word modified on there, don't. Okay, I'll give you that material. I'm currently working in lab 108, so I work ahead of you and I will um, make those ready for you. Uh, so this assignment folder lists all the six labs we're doing. Uh, all labs are virtual, so no materials are needed. So a typical indication that you're on the wrong track is you start preparing materials because you got some instructions that talk about the lab that you need to get something ready. Don't, okay? I'll give you the data if they ask you for uh, to do something, okay? Uh, and again, they're all modified. Only work on something that says modified on there. Um, they are found in the course. The textbook is also there under Course Materials, Earth Science, a reference guide. Please download that. It's pretty useful. Uh, how to find your assignments folder. Sometimes students try to catch up. Normally you go through the plan and then you see your lab, but then you don't remember exactly where it is. You can also go through tools and assignments. And I hope uh, you take advantage of pausing once in a while if this is all too fast. Uh, but I think that's the purpose of uh, this recording. Do not get you bored and you still can pause and go back. Uh, if you do that, you end up with these six assignment folders and that's what I meant. If you click on one of them, up here will be the instructions. At that time, I did not have a video ready. I will have a video ready for this lab here. Like this, a 10 minute video will help you greatly and uh, you will submit it. You click say add file and you should submit the file you worked on. Please don't submit the empty templates. Sometimes that happens. And here's this comment box. You can give me a comment when you submit it. I can give you a comment when I grade it and I'll put the numbers, the items there from the lab, one, two, three, four, five. I'll tell you how many points you got in each. And uh, if you want to take then these comments and revise it and resubmit it, I can give you more points. Um, extra credit. All students love it, but my point is um, I need to be careful. I need to be fair. So I give you two ways. I give you one time extra credit. If you come to Class Connect sessions and you do things I ask you to do. Um, but that's not fair to the students that do on the independent path. So I also give you um, extra credit 
optional assignments as part of labs. Down here is an example. In a lab, I would say, there's an extra credit item, do this and that and that, worth five points. You don't have to do it. You still get 100% in the lab, but if you do that, I will not give it you the points as part of the lab, so you won't get uh, 21 out of 16. You will get 16 out of 16 if you did everything right. The extra credit will go into its own bucket, so I can keep track of it because I cap it to 10 points on most of the units and then 20 points for unit 2 because it's so large. Uh, Class Connect schedule, I hope you downloaded that in the course materials yet uh, al already. You have two sessions per week uh, and it depends on your first letter of your last name, okay? First letter of your last name. So if your first letter of your last name starts with A and F, you're in the blue. So you have a Monday 12 to 1 and on Thursday 12 to 1. If your last letter is M through S, you have Monday 11 to 12 and Thursday 11 to 12, and I think you can figure out the other two by yourself. We have one time a special schedule around 9.25 and 12.4 uh, where I only see you once, and I'll set those sessions up. Currently, I've set it up uh, up until a certain period of time, and I will uh, keep that update as we go on. Uh, there are also two more support sessions, two optional support sessions. I will probably use them, put them on Thursday afternoon in this time slot and on th Friday. Um, you can come there, it's more a tutoring type and uh, or a focused lab session. Um, there will be recordings available. All these will be optional though, okay? Um, pulse check. I'll do this and it's pretty wordy, but I explain it to you. Uh, what I do there is during a class connect sessions, a session, I'll ask you a simple question, you know, um, uh, give me, a, uh, do something and give me a green check, right? And it's a very quick thing you need to do and I give you maybe 30 seconds to give me a green check and um, and if it's a bit long I go a minute or two and I put the timer up but then if I don't get a response from you I do not know whether you are alive whether your pulse is ticking I will put you in a breakout room that breakout room will have in, in some instructions in there and uh, could ask you just for a simple check could ask you to do something else why were you not there and then later on I will join you in the breakout room and um, if you did what I asked you to do, I will move you back into the main room. Everything's cool. But if not, I will probably come in one more time, but then finally there's no response from me. I will remove you from the session. Uh, at one point in the session, I will lock the room so you can't co come back in, right? And then you can explain to me what happened in an email or something like that. Uh, so this is an example of a pulse check slide, right? You're in the breakout room, you missed the pulse check in the main room, or. Uh, something like this, and I ask you to give me a red X. So read carefully, <laughs> okay? I want not always the green checks are what I'm looking for. And here are some instructions. Breakout rooms, I love breakout rooms. Typically a, a session is, I will say hi, we'll do a little warm up, then I'll do a presentation about the lesson of the day, and then I send you to breakout room to do some work. Now some of you like to work alone, some in groups. So I'll kick you all into breakout rooms. Me one, me two, me three, me like you. <laughs> And then um, you're there and you can start doing the work. You get your slide, you do your work, you give me a green check if you're done. If you want to work together, I let you sometimes move. Okay, it's not always. And if I see you misbehaving in these rooms, I definitely won't let you move. But you can decide, hey, I know this student from English and we work together on other things. You can get yourself then over into an us room. I need to enable that, so if it doesn't work, let me know. And then you can work together as a team. Okay. One hint is you always want to remember your room number uh, because it could be that your internet goes down, you get kicked out, you come back in, you don't know where you were. Okay, that's a little hint. This is very close and dear to my heart. This is the graphing of data. Oh, I love that red dot on this blue slide. I grabbed some, just to give you an example of what I mean with it. I grabbed some data from a city that's close by for me, the temperature versus time for a 24-hour period. And it's pretty informative, right? Um, Things like you should notice, is this a linear trend? I don't think so. Is there a minimum? Well, at about 5, 6 in the morning, it's the colders, right, on that day. And is there a maximum? Yeah, the afternoon, around 4 or 5 o'clock the afternoon. And then it dropped off. And there's some little kinks here, probably some clouds caused something going on. And um, that's what I really want to get across from you. I give you opportunities to graph. Uh, and uh, using graphics to explain science, it's, I think, at the center of everything. You can talk about the graph, you can write easily a couple of sentences about it, like I just was mentioning it, and um, it's really a, a unifying element of science to look at data, 
We don't like to look at numbers. We like to show them graphically. Ah, I'm glad I'm in the sequence again. Um, so for you to do is to complete this course exploration. And I showed you where the links are. And it was sent out to you in the um, live session. And then complete the lessons in your plan. You know, every day you have a lesson. And there's a footnote there. If you start later in the semester, every two weeks we have new groups. We call them cohorts of students starting two, three, and four. Um, you are always excused from the assignments, from the prior assignments. But I say you're optionally excused. You can decide to do it. If you do it, it might be good for you, right? Especially those quizzes. Um, and uh, because you have to know the content. So even if you're excused from the assignments, you have to know the content starting from lesson 101, which is from the beginning. Okay? Uh, so it's up to you. Um, you don't definitely have to do the big ones, the labs, but maybe the quizzes. You want to check if you got the lesson right. Uh, did you understand everything? So let me shake your hand, move the mouse away or the laser pointer away. Um, and I'm not just doing this uh, as, a, as a symbol here. I really would like to shake your hand and, and say, hey, this is a partnership. There will be many opportunities for you to say, hey, Mr. Z, what did you mean there? What are you saying? Uh, you disagree with something, OK? And, and so let me know that we'll work it through. And I'm looking forward in working with you. And at the end of every presentation, I like to give you a chance. You're going to see that in the live session to tell me, did we achieve the goal? Did this presentation meet its purpose? So um, do you understand more about the Earth Science course? And do you know what to do next? And if I hear low scores, ratings between one and five, then I can have a chance to probably uh, tell you now or even the next time. So let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Let's go Earth. Bye, everybody.